Welcome to the new journey to paradise. My name is Michael and I am the founder of Triple Grace and the Righteous Path Movement Foundation. Today we are going into part 6 of our journey. We are on the move, a great multitude walking through the wilderness. We continue our walk and pass people who worship on a broken altar. They look sad and miserable. They do not know how to rebuild their altar, and so we stop and restore it with twelve unhewn stones. The people who worshipped on the broken altar are joining us and walking with us towards the holy mountain, Mount Zion. There we will meet the Holy Father, Yahweh, and He will rapture us into paradise. So walk with us to this holy mountain, to Mount Zion. Our journey will take us to many places. Join us and walk with us. Today we are talking about an interesting topic, the restoration. What do we have to restore? We have to restore our churches to the old glory, how it was before. And without further ado, and without announcing, the announcement will come today at the end. I will go inside of what we call the Church 2.0. This is our page about the Church 2.0. Behold, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. This is from Isaiah 43, verse 19. I have to explain something before we start on it. I received a vision from the Lord. And in this vision, I was sitting in a big church and the church was separated in two parts on the left were sitting the women and on the right were sitting the men but I was sitting in the front row of the left side so on the wrong side and in my whole bench was only another person sitting with me otherwise I was alone and the people in the church were very angry with me and were looking at me and, say, and saying something that I should change and I refused to change. I was sitting there in the front row on the left side throughout the whole church service. And when the service has ended, the priest and the elders of the church came to me and they started to speak very angrily to me and say, what do you want? Why are you here? What are you doing? Why are you sitting in the wrong place? This is not good. What do you want? And then I said, what I want is a church 2.0, a church that is performing miracles and wonders, that will be recognized in public, that is filled with so much of the Holy Spirit that the members are shining for all to see that heals the sick and raises the dead, that is filled with the Shekinah glory, that is actively advancing the kingdom of God, that represents our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that people will know and love, that all believers want to join, where all are welcome, that acts in the name of the Father, in which all members live without fear, that is blessed by God abundantly. Oh, the people were starting to mock me and say, what are you dreaming about? This cannot happen. We are the true church and nothing will change us. Then I continued and said, I want a church in which young and old come together in unity, love and support, in which God the Father dwells in the heart of every member. That is so potent that demons will flee into swines in which every member shines forth as a light in the darkness, in which every member is equal, that is seen bringing forth love into the public daily, that everyone wants to join, 
It is available in all nations that walk, act and teach as Jesus did, that turns the heart of the children to their father, that is in the mouth of all people, so powerful that it can grow even in the darkest corners of the enemy territory. The priest said, why will you stop to blaspheme? Our churches are the strong churches. We are the churches of the Lord. I said, no, you have gone very far away from it. What we need is a church that is seen as being blessed by God. That is the talk of the people by day and night. That inspires even the strongest atheist. That all people are pointing to. So strong that behind each and every member, you will see a warrior angel of the Lord standing that changes the climate of any situation just by being present, that operates behind the veil, that prophesies and acts on it daily, that is doing mighty steps for the Lord, that distributes the wealth of the sinners to the righteous. That is a wonderful sight in the eyes of God, a church of wonders and miracles. This is the time in the vision now when they did take me and throw me out of the church. And that was the end of the vision. So I understood clearly from that, that we have to change something, that we have to restore something from old, a tried and trodden path, an old way that is shown to us in the book of Acts, assemblies of love and righteousness. So this is the foundation and the basis on which we model triple grace. Because Triple Grace is the Church 2.0, acting on behalf of God and His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. Even so, we do not call ourselves Church, but Assemblies of Love and Righteousness. And this will not only be a dream or a vision, but it will become reality very soon. And that is the reason why we are walking to Mount Zion, with you together so that we can build this church 2.0, can restore the assemblies to glory again. Everything that was lost will be replaced with a letter rain and double power. But to do this, we have to do a restoration. 500 years ago, Martin Luther started the Reformation against the Catholic Church. Now it's time for us to start a new reformation, a new restoration against the worldly churches. So join me, help me that we can restore it to glory again, the glory of the Father filled with his Shekinah glory. Let us see what we have to restore. Let us see what we have to do. We have created 95 theses like Martin Luther did, in which we, where we describe what should be changed and what has to be done and how you have to act. So let us have a look at them. This is a resource that you will find on Triple Grace. Most of the teachings that I have on YouTube are pages of Triple Chris. So you can go there and read them and can follow it up, what we say. The Restoration, the 95 Theses of Triple Chris. Wisdom, Warning and Work. The Societies of the Rose will be established in all nations and all towns to bring forth the sons and daughters of God, the next level, the master level. What do I mean with a master level? Is that elevating ourselves above others? No. But who was the master? Was Paul the master? Was Peter the master? Or John? No. Jesus was the master. So if we are on the master level, then we are acting, thinking, talking, and doing things as Jesus did. This is the master level. So our 95 Caesars will start with the first one, love God above all else and love your neighbor as yourself.
These are the Holy Commandments. Jesus has given us these two commandments. They are the foundation. From there you will start. Love God the Father above all else and love your neighbor as yourself. On this hangs all the commandments, all the Ten Commandments, and all the prophets, and all the sins, and all the teachings. Second, God is about love, unity, and support. Support. God is not only charity, but also supporting one another. We have a whole teaching about it. Please go back to it. Have a look. Watch it. Share it. Send it to other people. So that they all come and join us on our way to Mount Zion. Third, what does reading the scriptures and talking about it bring forth? Nothing, when no action follows. A great problem of the churches today is that they are just sitting. They are listening to sermons, they are listening to what the people on the pulpit are saying, and they make great teachings and great sermons. And they are perfect speakers, not like I am, but they can speak fluently without any problem. In their native tongue, it all sounds very great. But then when it ends, the people are going back into the world, are going back into Babylon and no action follows. Lazarus is still sitting at, in front of their gates and there is no help. Fourth, woe to you churches when you are only talking and reading, but no fruits is produced. Has the Lord not brought forth righteous deeds every day? Jesus himself was active every day, not only in teaching, but also in healing, in listening, in helping the suffering, the needy the poor. If you tell me that Jesus was not active and did not do deeds of righteousness, works, then I think you have never read your Bible. Five. Go to your denominations. Go to your denominations. Don't you understand that the kingdom divided will fall? True sonship is about unity. Unity, kingdom. Now people are saying Jesus came and abolished the law that the Father gave. Is that not that the kingdom is divided? How can the prince stand against the king? I think there is a misunderstanding that, that uh, Jesus has come to fulfill the law, not to abolish it. And for us also unity means that we have to come together in assemblies, support one another, because alone we will not go through these calamities that will come. Six, go to you church leaders. Can you not discern the signs of the time? Why are you walking in the world, to things of the world, and listen to the world, instead to spread the gospel of the kingdom? This is against the church leaders. They are in the world. They are participating. They are burning their holiness in the flames of tolerance. They listen to the world. Everything has to become worldly. Everything has to become according to what people see. Instead to listen what Jesus has done and follow his way. And see what God has planned for them and the purpose in life. Seventh, who has told you that you shall preach a gospel of prosperity or a gospel of poverty? Don't you know that your father is merciful and providing all what you need? Cast off greed and the demon of poverty and be satisfied with what the Lord will provide. We have talked before in another teaching about balance and harmony. The gospel of prosperity is false, but the gospel of poverty is false e also. You should not be poor and you should also not live in luxury. The medium way, the middle path, is the narrow path, the righteous path. And there the Father, God Almighty, Yahweh, will provide you with everything. Do not have to worry about tomorrow. You will be placed under his wings. 
and he will provide it. Perilous times are at hand, and we must gather together to survive what is coming unto the earth. The times of judgments have arrived. So what we do about it? Are we sitting alone in our places and waiting until the tsunami is coming or until the earthquake will strike? Or are we building safe havens where we can come together to support one another and to help in any kind of calamity? 9. Praise the Lord in unity. Support one another with love and understanding. Stand for the needy, poor, suffering, the nameless and faceless, and lift them up in the name of God the Father. This is a call to societies of the rose. Come together, support one another, stand for the needy. Lift them up in the name of Yahweh, not in your own, but in Yahweh's name. Ten. Trust in the Lord for your salvation and walk in the footsteps of Jesus in the same way he walked the earth. People are saying we have to walk behind Jesus, we have to follow him. Yes, that was the old level, the old church age. But now we are at the time after the resurrection in transformed places, transformed understanding, transformed bodies. And now we have to act as Jesus did, the same way as the apostles received the Holy Spirit and then could do the miracles of the Lord and went out to show it to the world. We also have now to walk, act and teach as Jesus did. 11. Come out of the churches, out of the world and proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of God. It is time to go forth and to build societies of the rose in every town, in every nation, on every continent. To come out of the old and to embrace the new. God is making a new thing and you can be part of it. And you can show it forth that it has started now. Be part of it. Join us. Walk with us, because together we are strong and can change this world. And we can proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of God. 12. 12. Be clothed in the garment of praise and receive beautiful ashes. I think there is nothing more to say to this one, because the garment of praise is righteousness. The beauty for ashes is that God will provide for you. He will give you abundance for your suffering because you went through the wilderness period. And through this period of suffering, he lifted you up. 13. Mourn at Mount Zion and be part of spiritual Israel. Let us worship at Mount Zion. It's a dwelling place of Yahweh. Let us pray together and be part of spiritual Israel. This has nothing to do with the Jews. We are the children of the Father, the children of Zion. So let us go there and gather the people and bring them forth to the mountain so that the Lord will see his children. 14. Show forth your love given to you by God to all people and be an example of the light in the darkness. The love that you receive from Yahweh Every day you will bring it forth. Every day you will lift up people. You will be an example of love and righteousness in the world. A light in the darkness. 15. A new thing is born and taken to God in his throne. Again the societies of the rose will travel to Mount Zion. And there a great multitude, clothed in white, will be ruptured. And a part of this multitude will be sealed for the 144,000. 16. Loving kindness will overtake the world. The world is full of hatred. Now it's time that we bring love into the world and righteousness and kindness 
Have mercy at Lazarus at, the, at your gate. Lift up the needy, help the nameless and faceless. 17. A multitude clothed in white will spread to all nations and all towns. The societies of the rose will be established everywhere in the world. And you can be an active part of it. You can establish your own society of the rose, wherever you are, so that you be the light in your neighborhood. For the Father. For Jesus Christ. 18. Brotherly love will walk in unity. This commandment of Jesus Christ to love your brother. How do, can we do this? We can only do it if we come together. Build a great unit, a unit of righteousness in the societies of the rose, on our way. Spread your love to your brother. Do not backstep him. Do not fight him. Do not twist his word, the words in his mouth. But see the love of the Father coming through him. 19. Two sons and daughters of God will despise death and Satan, despise gold, riches, and worldly honors. If you come out of the world, you're not interested in riches and gold and your jobs and your career and what the world will say about you or if they want to lift you up. No. You will follow the Lord. God alone. Yahweh the Father. And the enemy who, who has tortured you and put you in bondage, he will run away and you will despise him. You will despise Satan and despise death. Because through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, you are saved from death and from Satan. 20. They will walk in true obedience of the Lord, bringing forth his love and be covered in his glory. Walk with the Father, walk with Yahweh, bring forth his love and he will put you under his wings of his glory. And he will do that every day. No fears anymore. Because a thousand angels will stand around you. 21. Woe to all leaders, churches, or dominations that will stand against these called ones. If they reject you, don't worry. Because they will get their fate. If they say, this is not the right way, we have to stand in the old. We have to be only servants, we can never be on a new level. Then tell them, this is not right. Walk with us. See how the Father is blessing us. But do not judge them. Do not use bad words against them. Because they will find that the mice, Yahweh will judge them. God will judge them. It is not our work to judge. 22nd. No worldly power has the right nor the might to object the moves of God Almighty. Which government want to stop you? Sorry, I have to drink something. No worldly power has the right nor the might <clears throat> to adopt the moves of God Almighty. Which government will come to stop you if you are under the wings of Yahweh? The government will, will be not able to stop the, the movement towards the holy mountain. And they have no right to do that. But you should, we should also not rely on, the, on governmental services. We have only to rely on God the Father. 23. Watch the rehearsal of the Millennium Kingdom through the actions of his people. What are we doing? This coming together must have a sense. Why are we doing this? How do you think the Millennium Kingdom will be? There we will be in a unit. All believers of Jesus will be together. 
So it is similar of what we are doing now in the societies of the world. Gathering the people together. Bring them into unity. So this is a kind of rehearsal of the Millennium Kingdom to come. Love, brotherly love, righteousness, helping the needy, spreading the gospel of the kingdom to the nations. This is a reversal of the Millennium Kingdom, 24. The line will be drawn today between good and evil, between lukewarm and being on fire, and between the old and the new level of sonship. You, you yourself, when you come out of the world, you draw the line, you draw the line in the sand and say, okay, now we are leaving Egypt, now we are leaving Babylon, now we are leaving the world. And we are entering the new level of sonship. Now we become two sons and daughters of the living God, of Yahweh. Draw the line today. 25. Who has given you permission to interpret the law, to dispose the commandments of God and to sacrifice holiness in the fire of tolerance? Many churches say, oh, we are not anymore under the commandments of God. Oh, everything, the old law has been totally passed away and we have nothing to do with it. We are totally new and everything is of the old is forgotten. But at the same time, these churches sacrifice holiness in the fire of tolerance. They tolerance evil. They say good is evil and evil is good. The tolerance movement is one of the greatest success the enemy has ever brought into the world. If you do not follow them, they call you intolerant. They say, oh, you are very old and uh, radical people and and uh, you, you are not part of our ways. No, you don't want to be part of their ways. You don't want to be tolerant to evil. We will never sacrifice the holiness in the fire of tolerance. Church 2.0 will be a holy church. 26. You follow the world instead of heaven and boost about your glory in the churches when you have no glory. Many people claim that they are the prophets and the churches are the best and they have all the knowledge they have seen behind the veil. But in reality, as it is written in Revelation, these churches have no glory. They have nothing, they are naked. They have no property of heaven. They have no insight. So stay away from such churches and establish societies of the horse. Be part of Church 2.0. Let us stop here now, because the 95 theses of the restoration are very long. So I will continue in part 7 and part 8 with it. For now, I thank you that you are watching. Please join us. Join Triple Grace. Build societies of the rose in your neighborhood. Come together, walk with us the new journey to Mount Zion and help us in our ways. Subscribe, like, click the bell icon and share the videos with your friends and family. And if you feel guided, please help us to make new videos. Help us with your support, with your Acts of loving kindness. Send us a few donations so that we can assist the needy and the weak, the suffering in the world. If you need information for donations, you will find them in the description box below. For today, I thank you. May God bless you and your family abundantly. This is Michael Maranatha.